Coming up on Mayo Clinic Q&A. One of the most disabling aspects of seizures is the unpredictability. Epileptic seizures are a central nervous system disorder in which brain activity becomes abnormal, causing periods of unusual behavior, sensations, and sometimes loss of awareness. Today we'll discuss how a new technology could forecast a seizure before it affects an individual, allowing for better treatment and possibly even prevention. Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm your host, Dr. Helena Gazelka. And do I have a fascinating topic for you today? We're gonna to talk about seizures or epilepsy. Despite treatments that include medication, surgery, and neurostimulation devices, many people with epilepsy continue to have seizures. The uncertainty of it and when a seizure may come up affects their quality of life. But what if the patients could anticipate the seizure and take action? A recent Mayo Clinic study tested a technology to do just that. And I have Dr. Benjamin Brinkman, an epilepsy scientist at Mayo Clinic, here to discuss it with me today. He's the senior author on the study. Welcome, Ben. Hi, Helena. Thanks for having me today. I'm so excited that you're here because I find this just fascinating. I'm kind of an addict of my Apple Watch. And so any new technology that you can figure out things from the body through your wrist, I think that's amazing. Uh, it is amazing. It is amazing what uh, how, how, how things are, are progressing these days. Ben, what made you interested in studying this topic? Seizures are one of one of the most disabling aspects of seizures is the unpredictability. That's a fairly consistent finding in studies. Patients tell us that, um, surveys tell us that, uh, and so it's been a very interesting topic. I think for many years, uh, there's been quite a bit of work that's been done uh, uh, towards forecasting seizures with invasive devices. Um, these could these are um, typically neurostimulators that are implanted. Uh, in the brain with uh, directly, uh, you know, reading brain waves directly from brain tissue. And uh, those approaches have been fairly successful. Uh, there are a couple challenges, I think, with, with those approaches. First of all, uh, there's not currently a, a, a device that's routinely available uh, and FDA approved that can do this. Um, and that's something that we're very interested in and, and working on. And of course, not everyone wants to have an invasive device and it's, it's not really appropriate for everyone. Ben, can you tell me what is the difference between uh, when do you use the word seizure and when do you use the word epilepsy? Uh, a seizure is a, a single event. Actually, um, many of us in our lifetimes may have a seizure. Uh, they can be provoked by many different things. If your, your blood glucose drops, if you have a head, uh, head trauma, sometimes you can have a single seizure and never have another one. Um, uh, we don't call that epilepsy. Epilepsy is a, a consistent... Uh, or repetitive, um, un, uh, uh, unprovoked seizures happening uh, 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 unexpectedly. Um, so if there's a provoking factor for a seizure, we, we wouldn't call that epilepsy. Okay. So Ben, you have used the analogy of a weather forecast and how that helps us predict our behavior. Tell us how that relates to seizures. Yeah, well, just like um, just like a weather forecast, uh, they don't always get it right, <laughs> or there can be things that change uh, and, and change the weather forecast. Uh, seizure forecasting also, it's never exactly perfect. Um, it, what we think we're, we're doing with these devices is identifying maybe a seizure prone state in the brain uh, and you know, looking at, at whether it's EEG, brain waves, or um, some other physiological parameter. We think that's what we're measuring. Obviously, um, you can, a, a person's brain can be in a seizure permissive or seizure prone state and not have a seizure. That's certainly possible. Um, and then sometimes maybe that state comes on quickly or, or you know, the forecast misses it for whatever reason. So, so it's a probabilistic uh, forecast. It's, it's a, you know, we think we're going to get it right most of the time, but not always. Interesting. So, you know, as a physician, I'm familiar with EEGs or reading brain waves to determine seizures, but how does a device worn on the wrist assist with this? So certainly it is a little more challenging, we think, to, to um, predict seizures from a wrist-worn device. Um, epilepsy is a brain disease, and obviously if you're measuring the brain directly, it, it makes sense that you're probably going to do better. Um, however, the brain is, is highly interconnected. It affects every system in your body. So 
if something changes in your brain, it does sort of make sense that you might see some changes, subtle changes elsewhere in your body. Um, and we're looking at um, skin conductance, very subtle things uh, uh, that, that, that change about your, your body, your heart rate. Um, and we're looking at fairly subtle changes. Interesting. So what did the results of your study show when you've trialed these? Well, we found that in, uh, it was a small cohort and in five of the six patients that we studied, we were able to predict their seizures better than a random predictor. Um, which tells us that there is a signal there. Uh, we were able to accurately uh, predict two thirds of their seizures, which means we missed a third of them. Uh, again, there's quite a bit of engineering work yet to be done. We need to fine tune these algorithms. Um, this, was, this was a proof of concept uh, study and, and it's exciting because we weren't sure if there was a signal there, something that we could work with. And, and I think the conclusion is that there is something there. We can, we can, uh, we can work with this. Um, it, it is quite a ways uh, away from being routinely available. I think that's an important point mm -hmm. to remember. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of engineering and uh, a lot of improvement to what we're doing that, that's needed before it would really be helpful to someone. What are the next steps in research like this before it becomes available to um, patients? The next steps, we, we were putting in for uh, funding to do a larger study uh, and to spend uh, some time and effort uh, improving our algorithms. Um, you know, one of the things in this new era that we live in with AI and machine learning is that data is king. Uh, we really need to collect lots of data uh, so we can train our algorithms to find these subtle signals. Um, and, and so that's, that's something we're embarking on now. Um, you know, before it would be uh, routinely available for people with epilepsy, uh, we, we'd need to do a few more studies uh, to show that it works. And I think we'd have to find a, a you know, I guess a, a corporate partner that would, who would be interested in marketing this and, and taking it through the FDA and, and getting approval for it. Um, that all takes quite a bit of time. So, you know, I just, just want to make the point that while we're very excited about these initial results, um, you know, it, it'll take quite a bit of time before this is available. Ben, um, you must be inspired to work on something uh, so long as this. How do you foresee this being um, helpful to patients uh, with their quality of life who have epilepsy? Yeah, there are a number of ways. The, the first, and I guess maybe the most obvious way that it, it could be helpful is if you get a seizure warning or you, you have some idea that you're probably going to have a seizure at a certain time, you can rearrange your activities. You can avoid um, public situations. Obviously, if um, you know someone gives public speeches sometimes or um, you know, just has to interact with clients, uh, those types of things where, where it would be embarrassing to have a seizure uh, in, in front of someone, you can avoid that. You can rearrange your schedule a bit. Um, and that, that could be tremendously helpful and empowering to people. Um, we're also very interested, I think, in ways of preventing seizures. If you know a seizure is coming, you could take a fast acting medication perhaps. Um, and, and of course, if we get the timing right and the dosage right, maybe that would uh, prevent the seizure from happening at all. That would be wonderful if we could uh, uh, build that capability. Um, in addition, some people have, for example, a vagus nerve stimulator, a neuromodulation device. And on many of those devices, it's possible to turn up the stimulation temporarily. And uh, again, with, with appropriate consultation with a, a, a neurologist, that might be an appropriate thing for someone to do in those situations. And it might prevent a seizure. As a physician, Ben, I was thinking of the value of knowing how frequently someone was having seizures, um, like you said, so that you could try to prevent them by either changing their medications or changing their treatment regimen in some way. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's another area that we're very interested in, apart from the forecasting detection of seizures using these devices, it's surprisingly valuable. Uh, many people who have epilepsy uh, the seizures impact the memory uh, areas of their brain, and they simply don't remember their seizures. So um, for a physician, that can be very challenging. Um, it's, it's hard to know how many seizures a patient is having. Do I increase the medication? Do I not? Um, and, and we hope that these devices will also help in that area, that we'll be able to give physicians an objective record of how many seizures this person had you know, in the past month, for example. Well, I'm so glad that you're working on this, Ben. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's exciting you. work and it's a privilege to be involved. Yes. And thank you for being here today to tell us about your work.
Well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Our thanks to Dr. Ben Brinkman, an epilepsy scientist at Mayo Clinic, for being here today to talk about preliminary uh, research in wrist devices to forecast seizures. I hope that you learned something. I know that I did. We wish each of you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.